So it is about that time. It is 10 o'clock. Time for our Tuesday morning slow flow and meditation. My name is Leah and I am subbing for Lauren today. I will be guiding our practice. We'll have about an hour of flow and then about 15 minutes for meditation at the end of practice. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana during that time or join us in meditation. So as I mentioned before, our props today will be the bolster, blanket, and two blocks. You can use bed, cushion, bed pillows or uh, sofa cushions instead of the bolster. The blanket I have is a throw blanket about this size. To start, we're gonna get started on our backs. So pull the blanket up pretty thin. It's just to pad the head, give it some softness at the back of the mat. We'll start lying down here. We're gonna use our um, bolster or cushions under the knees. So giving some extra support to the low back. So find your comfortable beginning pose here. On the back, legs, knees are supported with a bolster or cushions. Head is supported with a, a folded blanket on a low fold. And we'll begin to draw our awareness into the present moment. Letting go of the rest of our day, any thoughts of the rest of the week starting to drop in. I invite you to close your eyes here, bringing awareness to your breath. Today's practice will be focused on self-awareness as a path to self-acceptance. We'll begin this practice with a body scan. So let's take stock of what we have today in our body, as well as taking stock of what we have in our mind and in our emotional state. So first noticing the head, feeling it rest, on the blanket, noticing the points of contact and the feeling of support. And then checking in with our neck. How does the neck feel today? No need to move or adjust. We're just observing to begin with. And the practice today is about observing without judgment. So noticing what we have, what we find, allowing it to be, and shifting our focus on to the next thing. So from the neck, we move down to the shoulders, feeling them resting heavy on the mat. Noticing if there's any stiffness or tension. Understanding that all sensations are temporary. Breathing into any areas of tension. Observing the arms and the hands, how they feel. maybe understanding the way they feel as a result of their tasks and their responsibilities for us. Sending compassion to our arms and hands for all that they do. Scanning through the chest, heart space, 
noticing if the breathing is fluid and steady or if there are any obstructions or shortness of breath. Knowing that this practice will help us to find a fluid and steady breath that will guide our practice. Now tuning in to the abdomen, the internal organs of our digestion, our core body, the muscles that really help us in all that we do. Sending some compassion and gratitude to all of our vital organs. keeping us functioning and healthy without thought or effort. Noticing our hips and glutes relaxed and supported now. Feeling heavy against the mat. If you find any areas of tension there, just send some loving breath to those areas. Softening through the legs and knees. Observing the sensations, the support of our pillows or bolster. Feeling the places that our feet and legs make contact with the earth or with our supports. Noticing the feet and sending them some acceptance and gratitude for walking us through life. Let's take a deep inhale together, slowly drawing breath through the nose, expanding the body, and slowly exhaling out the mouth, allowing the abdomen to drop and soften. We'll do that again, inhaling through the nose, And exhale, softening, letting the abdomen fall. And then let's begin to rock the head slowly side to side, bringing some gentle movement into the body as we wake up this morning. And then we'll inhale, stretching the arms out wide. You can wink, wiggle your fingers, maybe roll the wrists. And exhale, give yourself a big hug, wrapping one arm over the other. Draw breath here with the arms crossed, noticing the back lifting off the mat and the space between the shoulder blades expanding. On the next inhale, reach those arms wide again. Maybe you roll the wrists the other way. As you exhale, give yourself a hug, wrapping the arms the other way. Again, taking an inhale, noticing the breath stretching across the back body. Exhale, softening. We can release the arms down. Let's gently remove our supports. Remove the props from under the legs. We'll draw the knees in toward the body and make some wide circles with the knees here. About four times in one direction and then the other direction. Pausing at center here. If you have a block nearby or books, you may get that ready. We're going to let 
the two bent legs fall to the left for a spinal twist. Now, early in practice, it might feel nice to place a block between the legs. It gives a little more lift out of the twist, so it makes it a more gentle twist. The right arm extends long and the gaze can follow the right hand. Breathing here, slow, deep, intentional inhales, and slow, complete exhales. And then we'll slowly inhale, the knees come to center, and exhale, letting them fall to the right. If you used a block, you might take it with you to the other side. The left arm extends, the left shoulder is supported by the mat, and the gaze is at the left hand, if that feels good for your neck. Throughout practice, I ask that you check in with the body. Notice what you find. Send breath and loving kindness to any areas that feel tense or sensitive. And gratitude to each part of the body for all that it does, even during times of stress or strain. Inhale, bringing the knees back to center. We can remove the prop. Let's draw the knees in again, and we're going to send the feet up to the sky. Lift the hands to the sky. We'll roll ankles and wrists. Getting out the pops and crackles. Maybe scrunching fingers and toes. From here, let's reach the arms overhead. As you exhale, we can remove the um, blanket from under the head if you still have it there. As you exhale, reach for the toes. Inhale, extend the spine long. Exhale, reaching for the toes. One more. Inhale, spine extends, arm reach behind you. Exhale, reaching up for the toes and hold. Let's see if we can hold here for a count of five, four, three, Two and one. Release the back down. Re bend your legs and reach for the outer edges of the feet and come into happy baby pose. So the soles of the feet face the ceiling. The knees drop to the outer edges of the ribs. It might feel good to rock side to side here. If this causes any pain or strain, you can simply hold the knees at the outer edges of the ribs. That gives you a similar um, Stretch, a more modified version. And then find some stillness. Press the low back into the mat and tuck, gently tuck the chin, finding some length in the spine, relaxing the shoulders and jaw. And then we'll draw the knees together and we'll roll back and forward three times, coming to pause at the top in boat pose. So inhaling back and forward. Back and forward, feeling that massage of the spine. At the top, we'll pause in bow. You can support your legs with your um, hands under knees. Toes can be down or legs can extend parallel to the mat. The important thing here is to lift through the heart. You should feel the core engage. The arms might extend forward. We'll hold here for five, four, Thanking our core for all it does. Three, two, and one. Release the legs down, stretching them out long, flexing the feet. Tent the fingers and press into the fingers to find length in the spine. We're going to draw the abdomen in, gently tuck the chin here, getting length in the cervical spine. Breathing. On an inhale, let's reach the arms out and up to the sky, maybe the gaze lifts. And as you exhale, hinge at the hips, let your gaze follow your hands. If you get to your edge, wherever it might be, drop the hands to the mat and stay here. Imagine reaching the heart for the toes instead of the head. So we want the back 
to be flat, shoulders down the back, breathing. And then we'll plant the hands behind the hips, fingers face forward, the teeth, toes can point. We'll press the chest up to the sky, inhaling, rolling the shoulders down the back, feeling a nice stretch across the chest. And then we press ourselves up to center. Let's um, sit in Baddha Konasana, but bound angle pose. So the soles of the feet come together, the knees fall wide. If this is intense, you can support the knees with blocks under them. From here, we sit up nice and tall, gently tuck the chin, and let the right ear fall to the right shoulder. Breathing here, noticing what we find in our neck and our shoulder. Sending some acceptance to whatever that might be. Inhaling, exhale, let the chin fall toward the chest. And as you inhale, roll the left ear to the left shoulder. Again, bringing awareness into this part of the body. Allowing ourselves to feel the sensations of this stretch. Sending breath and kindness to the neck and shoulder. And then rolling the head back to center and lifting it up to neutral. Let's extend the left leg long. We're going to um, go into Janu Shirshasana. So the right leg stays bent. We'll inhale, reaching up to the sky. Exhale, hinging at the hips and folding toward that extended left leg. Again, leading with the heart here. So not rounding over, just um, reaching the chest forward. Breathing here, spine is long. As you exhale, maybe you hinge a little deeper. One more deep breath into the back body. And this time, exhale and fold, allowing yourself to round toward the extended leg. One round of breath here. And then inhale, pressing yourself up to sit. We'll come back to bound angle pose for a moment. This time lifting the chin to the sky and making big circles with the chin. And then taking those in the other direction. I hear lots of crackles and pops when I do this. You might too. And then bringing the head back to neutral, extend the right leg forward, keep that left leg bent. It's fine to have your um, block under the leg if it's supporting you. We'll inhale, lengthening the spine, reach into the sky. Exhale, hinging at the hip with that flat, flat back. We drop the hands when we get to our edge. The right foot is flexed. We're inhaling here, reaching the heart forward, maybe hinging a little deeper on the exhale. One more inhale, exhale, deepening. And this time we'll inhale and exhale, soften and round, folding over the extended leg. Breathing into the back body, finding some space and flexibility, acknowledging and accepting the differences between the two sides of our body that is natural. And then we'll inhale, pressing ourselves back up to sit. Cross your legs in an easy fashion or just come into a comfortable seat here for a moment. We'll inhale, reaching the arms out and up to the sky. Exhale, dropping the right hand down and reaching over with the left. Really find some length in the side body here. Imagine pressing, you can press it through the right hand to find more length in the left side ribs. 
You can stay here or you might take a couple shoulder circles if that feels good. And then we'll inhale coming to center and take that to the other side. Reaching over with the right, finding length and space between the bones. Breathing into this stretch, maybe pressing into the left hand to find space in the right side body. Inhale, lifting to center. Oh, sorry, take the circle, arm circles if it felt good on the other side. And then we'll lift up to center. Exhale, twisting to the right. You can tent your fingers on the ground, lifting up out of the hips and really isolating the twist above your waist. So the hips are just pointing forward and it's just your shoulders and torso that twist. The gaze might be over the right shoulder or wherever it is in your neck. Inhale, floating the hands to the sky as we come to center. Exhale, take the twist to the other side. Fingers can land, tented on the mat, on the ground. The gaze can be over the left shoulder or wherever feels comfortable. Deep, slow, steady breaths. And then we'll inhale, coming to center. And let's roll over our cross legs coming up to tabletop. If your um, knees are sensitive, you might support your knees with a blanket under them or double up your mat. So our hips are over our knees, <clears throat> our shoulders are over our wrists, and the core is drawing in and up. The spine is lengthening, so the tailbone reaches to the back of the room, and the crown of the head reaches to the front. This is an active pose. We're not dumping into the back and shoulders, we're lifting up out of the joints. From here, we'll move through cat cow, right? Inhaling to cat pose, rounding the back, tucking the chin, crossing the back to the center. Exhale, cow pose, the heart comes through the shoulders and the tailbones lifts. Inhale, cat. Exhale, cow. Inhale, cat. This time as you exhale, sink the hips all the way back to the feet. Or kind of a child's pose. And then as you inhale, imagine like you're a cat licking some milk off the floor, pressing the chest up, coming into cow pose. So as we inhale, we're in cat, rounding the back, sinking the hips. And then we inhale, pressing the heart down, forward and up, cow pose. One more time. These are kind of like cat cow rolls. Sounds like a sushi dish. <laughs> non vegetarian sushi dish. Coming back to neutral. From here, we'll take a modified vinyasa. So we're going to press forward, shoulders over the wrists. The knees are behind, are behind the hips here, and the spine is long. We'll exhale, bending the arms deeply, lowering chin, chest, belly, all the way to the mat. Forehead touches the mat. Extend the legs behind you, finding some length in the spine. Scoop the hands back to the ribs. Roll shoulders back and lift, slow cobra. Exhale, returning the head to the mat. Let's set the arms wide, about shoulder height, and inhale, coming up for another low cobra. Exhale, dropping head to the mat. Return the hands over shoulders. This time we'll inhale, low cobra, and press all the way back, child's pose. Your, your knees can be wide here. Toes touching, and the forehead, the space of the third eye is coming to the mat. So this space represents our intuition. And it's a nice physical cue to tune in to what our inner self is telling us. 
So we use this as a resting posture during practice to return to whenever we need a break or to return to our breath. It's also a nice way to remind ourselves to just listen to our inner voice. From here, let's press ourselves forward, tuck the toes, send the hips high, and we'll come to downward facing dog. You can bend into one leg and then the other, stretching up feet and the calves. You might even press into the tops of the toes. We don't often stretch the tops of our feet. The hands should be shoulder distance, feet or hips distance. You're pressing the heels toward the mat. It's fine to have a bend in the knees here. We want to be lifting up out of the joints and feeling some lightness in the hips. Breathing deeply, feeling the stability of the pose. And then on an inhale, let's roll ourselves forward to plank. The spine is long, heels lift, and we press the heels away. Crown of the head shines forward, core is engaged and lifting. Exhale, bending the arms, hovering halfway down. Arms are at right angles. Inhale, scooting, scooping the heart forward. Upward facing dog, heart lifts, the knees are off the mat, hips are lifted. Exhale, tucking toes, and the hips rise, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Let's look to the top of the mat, and we'll slowly walk ourselves to the top. Folding into ragdoll when we arrive, so the feet are hips distance, the knees bend deeply, torso rests on the legs. And you can rock yourself side to side if that feels good. Nod the head yes and no. Noticing how it feels, our first standing forward fold of the day. And then release the arms, and we'll slowly roll ourselves all the way up. Stand. Rounding the shoulder, rolling the shoulders down the back, coming to mountain pose. So in mountain pose, our core is engaged because we're gently tucking the tailbone that turns on the abdominal muscles. Shoulders are rolling down the back and relaxed. Face forward, we may have a gentle bend in the legs. From here, let's inhale, reaching out to the side, really turning on the hands, feeling our fingers, reaching up towards the side, pausing here and breathing. The hands might come together, lifting you up. As you exhale, let's reach over to the right. The gaze can come under the left arm. And then we'll reach to the center, inhaling. Exhale, taking that to the other side from a side body stretch. Inhale to center. Exhale, twisting to the right as we open our arms. The gaze is over the right hand. Inhale to center. And exhale, take the twist the other way. Arms wide, gazing over the left hand. Hips point forward. Inhale, the arms come together at the top. We'll draw them to heart center. Feet come together and we'll sit in chair pose with katasana. This is a thunderbolt shape that we're making here in the body. If you have any low back pain, you can slide a block between the legs. This forces you to engage the, um, the legs and align the knees and hips appropriately to protect the low back. The depth of this pose is not what's important. The important thing here is the alignment. So you want a long spine. You want the weight of the pose over the feet. So you should, over the ankles, sorry. You should be able to lift your 10 and see your 10 toes. Chin gently tucks. 
Great. Quads are working. Inhale, and as we exhale, fold. Breathing here, sending the tailbone to the sky. On an inhale, we'll plant the hands and step the right foot back, dropping the knee. You can have the knee if that felt good before. And if you have blocks or books, you can place one under your right hand here. On the inhale, we're gonna reach the left arm forward and up, coming into a twist. The blocks or books just give you some added height, make it a little easier on the hip. Breath is flowing. We're being kind to our bodies. So if there's any pain, we can gently come out of the pose. You can stay here or you might reach back. See if you can bend that knee and make contact for a little quad stretch. And then release the bind if you have it. Reach the hand down to the mat. We're going to press it to both feet and rise to our low lunge on Janiyasana. The heart lifts that we're going to pull up out of our hips here. The knee is bent over the ankle. Gaze can be forward or at the sky. You might bring palms together here. You might even bend the arms, bringing the folded palms behind the head. Beginning to stretch into the front of the shoulders and breathing. And then we'll reach those hands back to the sky, plant them on the mat. We're going to tuck the back toes, <laughs> unfold the mat, tuck the back toes and turn the pivot the foot, preparing for warrior two. So we want our heels aligned, the back foot is flat, and at an angle to the back of the mat. We're going to rise up to our warrior two. So we're getting into our hips. Left leg is bent deeply. Knees should track to the center toe on the left foot. You want your shoulders directly over your hips, so making sure you're not leaning too far one direction or the other. From here, we'll inhale, reaching the left arm up, feeling some length in the side body. And then straighten into that left leg, breathing. As you exhale, the left arm comes forward. I'm going to reach forward and then drop it down, finding triangle pose. So the right arm lifts. Your right shoulder is step directly over your left. The gaze can be high or low. This is a deep stretch. I, my back of my palm is supported by the, my shin. But you also can use a block on the high setting. That's a great way to do blocks here. On the next breath, we'll come back into warrior two and pivot ourselves to a runner's lunge. So the hands on the mat, the back toe lifts, the back heel lifts. Let's bend into that back leg, step all the way forward, and find chair pose. Hands come to the heart. And the torso rises, making that thunderbolt shape. One round of breath here. Nice strength and stability. And then we'll fold forward and step the left foot back, dropping the knee down, having it if you'd like. Finding a block to plant under the left hand if you did it on the right. And then we'll reach forward and up with the right hand coming to this twist. Breathing here, lifting up toward the sky, pressing down through the legs, noticing sensations in the body, sending breath and acceptance. You can stay here or reach back, maybe reach for that foot to Take a quad stretch for the left side. Three slow, deep breaths. And then we'll release. Both hands come to the mat. 
can remove the block and rise up, low lunge. Lifting out of the hips, hands might come together and reach for the sky. And if you try it on the other side, they might fold and come behind the head. We don't want the back to arch yet, so we, we're just lifting the shoulders, pressing the head into the shoulders, pressing into the legs. Nice. And then inhale, reaching for the sky, hands come to the mat, and we're gonna prepare the feet for warrior two. So the left um, heel comes down to the mat, both heels are aligned. We're pressing into the legs, opening up warrior two. Deep bend in the right leg. Hips are really opening here. Right knee tracks over the center, right toes. Shoulders directly over hips. So again, we're not reaching too far in one direction or the other. Gaze is over the right fingers. We'll inhale, reaching the right hand up to the sky, finding length in the side body. And then pressing into that standing leg, straightening it. As you exhale, reach forward with the right hand before you drop it down, lifting the left, coming into triangle pose. So I have my right hand pressed against my um, right calf but you also could use a block at the high setting. You want your shoulders stacked one over the other. The body is in a, a nice single plane. The gaze is lifted, if that's okay on your neck, or it can be down at the foot. One more deep breath here. And on the next breath, bend into the right leg, returning to warrior two. And then we'll pivot ourselves down, coming to runner's lunge. Plant the hands, step back to plank, and let's move through vinyasa. Exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. So returning to downward facing dog, <clears throat> our grounding pose, checking in with the body, checking in with the mind, checking in with the emotions. Let's look to the top of the mat. And walk to the top. Hold it here. Let's toe heel the feet wide. They may even come off the edges of the mat. You want the outer edges of your feet parallel to the outer edges of the mat. So we're coming into a wide forward fold. Your hands might reach to align with your toes. Drawing the head down toward the mat and breathing, releasing any tension in the neck or the jaw. You can shake the head no and yes. And then we'll press ourselves up to a flat back. Toe heel the feet back towards center. Bend into the knees. We're going to roll ourselves up this time. All the way to stand. In mountain pose. Beautiful. Okay, so from mountain pose, we'll do some balancing. Get a soft bend in the knees. Core is engaged, so the tailbone is tucking. Find a drishti or focal point for your eyes, something that's not moving. We'll bring our hands to our heart space in Anjali Mudra, drawing awareness into the body, focusing on our breath and our connection to the earth. 
When I inhale, the weight comes into the left leg and the left, the right knee rises. You can stay here or open the right knee out to the right. Holding for three, two, and one, bring the knee back to center. Holding here for three, two, and one, and plant that foot on the mat. Keeping our drishti, keeping our focus, we'll take it to the other side. Weight comes into the right leg. Left knee rises on an inhale. Staying here or opening the knee to the right. Pressing into the standing leg. Holding for three, two, and one. Returning the knee to center. Holding for three, two, and one. Releasing that foot down to the mat. Okay, next step, we're keeping our focus, keeping our fluid, steady breath, sending weight into the left leg, inhale, lifting the right knee, pressing into that standing leg and opening the knee to the side. From here, we'll plant the right foot on the standing leg finding tree pose. The right foot can be anywhere on the leg except the knee. The important thing here is balance. So your foot can be even kickstanded on the mat if you're having trouble finding balance today. You want the weight in the left leg and the connection to the earth there. And the lift is in the upper body so we can grow our tree branches. You can reach your branches to the sky, let them blow in the wind. You might bring hands together. And you might fold the arms behind you. Strong, steady, trees. We'll inhale, finding length. Exhale, bringing the hands through the heart center. The knee comes forward, kick out the leg and step it down. All right, taking that to the other side. Feeling that connection, hand to hand to heart. Feeling the connection to the earth. Sending weight into the right leg. Inhaling the left knee rises. We open it to the side and plant the foot tree pose. Your hands are an expression of how you're feeling. So you find what feels right in this moment whether your branches grow toward the sky or reach out to the sides or stay close to your body, you do what feels right. Three more deep breaths here. Incredible balance. And then we return the hands to the heart, feeling that connection. Extend the knee forward, kick the foot out, drop it down, and shake it out. Beautiful work. Let's take a vinyasa to clear everything away. Coming to the top of the mat, inhale, reaching out and up to the side. Exhale, hands to the heart, fold. Inhale, press up to a flat back. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, step back to plank. 
Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Vrta Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. From here, let's come down to our knees for a moment and we're going to prepare for a restorative pigeon pose. So we'll take our bolster or cushions that, and lie them vertical at the top of the mat. That's going to support our torso. And then you can have your blanket ready um, to support your hip. If you want additional lift under the um, bolster, you can have a leg, uh, lock or hooks under the bolster. That'll make sense in a minute. So once you have your prop set up, we'll press back to our um, downward facing dog. We'll inhale, floating the right leg to the sky. Exhale, bending the right knee and bringing it forward toward the right wrist. The left leg is going to extend straight back from the hip. We can take the blanket under the right hip here for support. You want to make sure your hip is grounded on something. So if you're not hitting the mat, make sure you've got blocks or blankets or cushions under that hip. From here, we look forward, sending the heart forward between the, the shoulders. Breathing here. Let's take three breaths. Noticing the sensations, our hips. And then slowly hinging forward onto our support. So you want the support under your complete torso and it should feel like a pillow. So actually it is quite nice to have the block under the, the pillows so that the head is higher than the hips. And then your arms rest wherever feels comfortable um, at the sides of the cushions or maybe underneath if that feels nice. The head turns to one side. You'll kind of naturally come to one side or the other here. So just do what feels right. Closing the eyes. Checking in. Noticing any thoughts that arise. Welcoming them in and then sending them on their way. Returning to the breath. Deep release of the hips. The hips are associated with our emotions. It is natural to feel some emotions arise as we rest in this posture, this restorative resting pigeon pose. Our work today is to reflect on what we find, on what we feel, accepting what is here for us. And extending compassion to ourselves, whatever it is that we feel or find.
Stay for seven more slow, deep breaths. As you're ready, we'll bring the hands under the shoulders, slowly pressing ourselves up, tucking the back toes, and let's press that right foot back and return to downward facing dog. Breathing here in our grounding pose. Lifting the hips away from the heels, pressing into the hands. On the next breath, the left foot floats to the sky. We bend the knee and draw the left knee toward the left wrist. Using our blankets or cushions to support the left hip, extending the right foot directly back from the right hip. The two sides are always different, so you might need a little more support on one side than the other, and that is fine. Breathing here with our spine long, gaze lifted. Rolling the shoulders on the back. And then we'll slowly Walk the hands forward, coming to rest the torso on our supports. The head should move to the other side <clears throat> so that the two sides can stay balanced. Place your arms wherever it feels comfortable. Make sure you feel totally supported here. You don't want to feel that it takes much effort to be in this pose. the weight of the body against your bolster or cushions. You might notice the texture, the sensation of those materials against your skin. Notice the feelings of your arms allowed to be heavy and relaxed. Feeling length in the spine. <clears throat> Feeling support and stretch in the hips. Noticing the differences between the two sides of the body. Understanding that there is a reason for those differences. The two sides of the body always function differently for each individual. And so it is natural that the muscles develop differently. We have different levels of flexibility on one side than the other. Through our yoga practice, 
we work toward balance. By practicing asanas or poses equally on both sides. Developing our muscles and flexibility. Bringing the body into greater balance. as a means to bring the mind and emotions into balance. Seven more breaths here. When you're ready, slide the hands under shoulders. <clears throat> Slowly press yourself up. Tuck the back toes and press the left foot up to the sky. And then return it to downward facing dog. We'll drop the knees down to the mat, sitting on our heels. For a moment and pausing. And then sit onto your hips. We'll extend the legs long. And slowly Roll ourselves down to our backs using our core strength. When you arrive, bend the knees and send the feet to the sky for a gentle inversion. You're welcome to take this inversion or you also if you have blocks and would like to um, take a supported shoulder stand, I'll show you how to do that. So you would take both blocks or one block, either way. If it's one block, it's on the wide setting, on the low setting, and you place it under your hips. Making sure you feel stable there before sending the feet to the sky. Either way, the important thing is ankles over hips. You might close the eyes and the arms if that feels good. We'll be here for seven breaths.
When you're ready, slowly lower the feet to the mat. Remove the block if you have it. And we'll come into a supported inversion for Shavasana, or you can take a more traditional Shavasana, whatever feels right. If you'd like to take the restorative supported version, you'll put your bolster or cushions lengthwise um, at the back of your mat where your head is going to lie. And you can place a blanket at the top to support the head. And then you'll take your books or blocks to the sides of your legs. You're going to release the back down to your support. And then find recline bound angles so the soles of the feet come together and the knees are wide. And you'll place the blocks under your legs for support. So this should be an effortless heart opener and hip opener. And if that's not feeling good today, you can return to where we started, which was with your bolster under your knees. You find whatever posture feels great. This is Shavasana. We allow ourselves to rest. Bones to release, to get heavy, and be supported by the earth. Relaxing our muscles and sending them lots of loving kindness and gratitude for all of the work that we have done during practice. Scanning the body. shoulders to be heavy and relaxed. Letting the arms be soft and supported. Sending gratitude to our hands and arms. 
our heart and all of our organs. Noticing our neck, jaw, face, ears, mouth, nose, and eyes. Thankful for all the ways we take in the world. Mindful of the messages we give out to the world. Starting, most importantly, with ourselves and the messages we send to ourselves. Making the practice one of self-acceptance, sending kind messages to the self. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana. If you'd like to move into a seated meditation, then we'll slowly roll onto one side, carefully removing any crops, pausing, resting on our side for a moment in stillness. And then slowly pressing ourselves up to a comfortable seat. I like to meditate sitting on a support. So if you have a block or a cushion, you might place it under your hips. Finding a comfortable seat, whatever that is to you. I'm going to have my blanket under my cross legs. So once you've found your comfortable seat, we'll sit up nice and tall. You might bring your hands to um, the Jnana Mudra, which is the thumb and index finger touching one another. If you have this mudra face up, this is um, a mudra that cultivates lightness lightheartedness. If you have that mudra face down, it's a more grounding posture. So just listen to what your body wants in this moment. Wherever you are, our meditation on self-acceptance Can be your guide? You might use the mantra as you inhale, I am. Exhale, my true self. I am my true self. My true self. I accept myself. I accept myself. I accept myself.
notice how you're feeling as thoughts arise. Acknowledge them and let them go. Returning to the breath, returning to our mantra. I accept myself. breath, slow deep inhales, slow complete exhales. For those who are in Shavasana, if you're ready to join us to close practice, Slowly and gently make your way to a comfortable seat. Let's place both hands over our heart. Gently bow the head. Sending ourselves gratitude for this practice today. Gratitude for prioritizing and making time for a practice of self-care. and sending ourselves appreciation for the work that we've done, working on observing the self without judgment, finding acceptance, compassion, and love, and understanding that these tools can be used beyond the mat, both in a practice of self-love and love for those around us. Let's bring our hands into Anjali Mudra. They can move to the space of the third eye, our intuition. I'd like to send gratitude to each of you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.